Boom Supersonic aims to launch by 2029. It's ambitious, to say the least. So in today's proceedings, what is the latest update with this company? Who's ordered the aircraft? And I'd also like to get into some of the very noticeable criticisms. So as for the launch, 2029 is when they hope to see their first scheduled passenger flights commence with Overture. Three hours is what they're saying would be possible between London and New York. With the use of a full-scale aircraft, the founder and CEO believes achieving before the end of the decade remains the absolute top priority. This all driven thanks to barriers that were previously in place being addressed by the business. Now, if we're looking at those barriers, it's both on a regulatory and technological level. The development of the XB1, a smaller demonstrator, which has caught a lot of attention, has been key to understanding how to actually develop the full-scale overture, with Boom taking all the learnings of the smaller aircraft to eventually adopt it on a larger scale. Meeting regulations has also been really important, for supersonic travel has not occurred for some time, and with regulations in place, how does Boom go about meeting these? Well, its initiative in Boomless Cruise is a technique that allows Overture to fly at supersonic speeds without creating a shockwave on the ground that can be felt, and that is definitely crucial to achieving overland flight without disturbances at high speeds. It opens up more opportunities for route deployment and also adoption from airlines. Boom Supersonic, despite facing pushback, has still made progress with the XB-1 and studies, stating that it was only a matter of months to really acquire the crucial approval to reverse regulatory bans on supersonic flight that had been in place for some time. But if we're talking about the time frame to launch for 2029 before getting into customers, it's pretty tight. So for Overture to launch by 2029, it would need to see its first full-scale Overture roll out by 2027. That's in less than two years, and one year exactly after the rollout, Boom would need to get its aircraft airborne for a first flight, and then a year later would be a first delivery. This is quite a big undertaking. You're looking at a two-year certification process from first rollout to first passenger flight. That is something even established plane makers like Airbus and Boeing have not been able to achieve, and for all the work that goes into everything before an official launch, this is cutting it pretty pretty tight to say the least, let alone Boom Supersonic needing to meet the 2027 deadline of a first rollout. But who has bought Overture? Well, when Boom Supersonic launched, its intentions were clear, and it was very adamant that a market existed for the aircraft that would redefine how travel was conducted after many decades without Concord. So far, interest in the product being put forward by the business has been mixed. Not all airlines are entirely behind the concept, and some, however, believe Boom Supersonic can create a feasible jet. With that being said, several companies have since the program's inception invested in it with the intention of purchasing planes and hopefully one day flying them. None, however, have promoted it more than United Airlines, who committed to 15 of the type with also many other options, plastering billboards around airports in the United States and in press conferences hailing the jet as a game changer for their future. Fellow US carrier American Airlines is the most recent customer, purchasing 20 of the planes with additional options. The first customer, and one from outside the US, was that of Japan Airlines, who pre-ordered Overture jets before a major redesign occurred, their deal having been finalised now a decade ago, but gone very quiet. However, many of the orders placed by airlines follow a new trend of investing in startups that aim to innovate and change the industry's landscape. The deals are often sizable, attract fanfare, and do certainly help show shareholders that the business is looking towards the future. But these airlines are not stupid as well. They would not invest such a sizable amount of money without having ways out of a contract as well, with absolutely no assurances that Boom Supersonic and all these other endeavours, for example, that United has invested in will ever get off the ground. Most would argue that many of these deals will not proceed, and Overture may not actually ever launch, but the investment from these airlines is definitely present, and now Boom must get to work to provide them with the plane that they have put their confidence in. Despite the business's mission to launch by 2029, Boom Supersonic has definitely faced its fair share of criticism from analysts, airline executives, and others. But what have been the key talking points? One of the biggest is the business case doubts, which involve the viability of the product being a long-term success, as confirmed by Ed Bastian, the CEO of Delta, the only airline of the big three in the United States.
United States that didn't commit to Overture, he has just been left with more questions than answers. Additionally, knowing that Overture would be a very expensive asset, the economics required to break even for a company is a cause for concern and would limit the customer base, let alone for an airline with a business case to operate the jet and making this a profitable return. While Boom Supersonic has been making strides in innovation, uncertainties remain over the environmental and noise impacts that will be felt, as well as the workarounds and the cost slash time associated with implementing the fixes. Ultimately, while the business highly touts the return of supersonic travel, it's arguably something many of us would return for convenience, but also just if we're being real, plane spotting as well, numerous roadblocks do still exist. Some of the harsher criticism has centered around the persistent teasers the company has put forward for investors rather than really hard hitting development that can occur. Additionally, on top of that, there are many of the belief that Boom Supersonic doesn't have the financial backing to actually get this program to launch. For while a factory land and progress on a demonstrator is crucial, actually getting the plane off the ground and flying with airlines and continuously being produced is a whole nother equation altogether. Let me know your thoughts on Boom Supersonic and more importantly 2029. Is that realistic for a launch or are you in the camp where it just isn't possible? Thanks for watching, take care, be safe and I'll see you in a couple of days right back here on Globetrotting. And we'll fly.